down thy boat! Hi everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name's Dave and today we're going to be starting to put together our D206 motor out of the uh, 584 tractor. Uh, I've got the uh, block all cleaned up, uh, gasket surfaces all clean and all that kind of thing. And somebody asked me recently what I use to clean the gasket surfaces. And I just got a regular die grinder with this surfacing disc. It just, it's got a, a mandrel for the die grinder and it's threaded on the back and it just turns down in and they're really slick. Uh, I believe 3M sells them. Uh, apparently the ones I got are Norton. Doesn't really matter. They're a two inch, uh, what is it? Two inch quick lock uh, surfacing disc, uh, cleaning disc. And they do a really good job for cleaning the gaskets. And then the ridge in the top of the block, the flange of the gasket goes into. I just used handy dandy scraper. And we are all set now to uh, check what they call standout on our cylinder sleeves. And that means the flange of the sleeve sticks up above the surface of the block a little bit. Uh, specifications on this engine calls for three to five thousandths. So we'll go ahead and set our sleeve down in. And we're putting that in without any O-ring or anything in place just right at the moment because this is just to check the uh, check fit in the block. There we go. Now these sleeves have an extra ridge on them that fits in the uh, fire ring of the head gasket I suppose. So you don't want to measure from there, you measure the flange, the outer flange. And to accomplish that, we'll just use a straight edge and put across it. And then we use a feeler gauge, uh, like a go no go gauge. And like I said, it's supposed to be three to five thousandths. So I've got my three thousandth uh, feeler gauge and six thousandth. Three thousand should go, six thousandth shouldn't. So I'm going to get a hold of it here. And we just try to feed them underneath the straight edge. Yeah, 3,000 slips in easily. Yeah, 6,000th does not. And we just do that for each of the each of the four cylinder holes. three and four cylinder holes are being a little bit stubborn they're very tight on the bottom of the sleeve but I can put it in upside down and get the same measurement and that way uh, then I put the o-rings in and when we drive we put the cylinders in we'll have to drive them the last bit of the way but they'll be in there good and snug and seal well and this gets us the same measurement anyway These kits come with two different O-rings. In this case, they're marked yellow and red. Um, you have to go by engine serial number. And in this case, uh, this one's a lower engine serial number. So we use the yellow O-ring. The O-rings go in a groove down in the block where the bottom of the cylinder sleeve sits. And you carefully feed that into the O-ring groove. And you want to have a little lubrication on the cylinder before you try sliding it in. Like a lot of things, huh? And dish soap is the preferred lubrication. Uh, oil eats rubber. And so you don't want oil on that O-ring in there uh, eating it up. Uh, you get coolant leaks. So use a little bit of dish soap. Doesn't matter what kind, any liquid dish soap. And you just give that a nice smear around the bottom of the sleeve. Just the tip. And then it should slip right into place.
at the bottom, make sure that the O-ring isn't out of the groove any. That's what was going on in this case, it was jamming against the, so the O-ring. There, and it slips right into place. You want to make sure you use the flat of your hand. Don't get your fingers wrapped around the sleeve or cut the pad right off your finger. Not pleasant. If you have one that's giving you trouble, use something soft like a piece of wood to finish it on down in. Like I said, you want to check the uh, O-ring first though to make sure that it is the sleeve is passing by the O-ring okay. And this one was, it was just tight and gritty at the bottom for some reason. Nothing too serious. And make sure everything is clean and then we're ready to go to the bearings main bearings. I'm going to get our old bearings out of the block. I find a small flat screwdriver in where the locking tab goes. Helps you to pop them right out. These bearings are packaged in pairs. One half is for the block it has the oil hole in it the other block is for the cap no oil hole so uh, it's best idea to keep them in pairs so we'll just set that half aside there for the moment we'll put this half in the block and put the other half in the corresponding cap Each side is sticking out just a whisker, which is how they're supposed to be. And you want to make sure you check that the oil passage is lining up properly. Uh, sometimes the bearings will be machined just a little bit off. As long as you're getting at least half of the hole, you're okay. If it's less than that, then something needs to be done. You maybe could drill out the hole in the bearing a little bit or something so that you get a decent flow of oil coming through. Now each of the caps are numbered from one to five from the front to the back. There's no corresponding number on the block but I mean it's pretty straightforward. One is at the front, five is at the back. You can see that that bearing is showing a lot of brass. It was getting pretty well to the end of its life. Wouldn't have been a lot longer before it would have caused troubles. Don't know if you'll be able to make it out on camera or not, but right there is the number on the cap. So you line up the tab on the bearing with the notch in the cap and slide it into place also. So they both stick out just a whisker. And I'll set this aside for now. Because once we get the bearings in, the next thing is laying the crank. I've got the uh, timing marks all lined up on our timing gears here. Uh, Sometimes it takes quite a few revolutions. The idler gear here has an odd number of teeth on it, so it doesn't line up every time that the gears make two full revolutions. It's something like every 30, I don't know, 36, 30 some revolutions before the, gear, the, the timing marks all line up again. Uh, and on your injector pump gear, there's six different timing marks depending on application. There, this family of engines has engines from three to six cylinders 
and all of those engines use this injector pump gear so depending on which application you could use any one of six different uh, timing marks this one uses the number four timing mark on the cam gear there's only one set of marks there's two dots on the cam and two dots on the idler injector pump is the one dot at number four on the cam or sorry on the injector pump gear and one dot on the idler and for the crank there's one dot on the idler and one dot on the crank uh, so I've got those all lined up ready to lay in and so uh, we'll oil up the, the main bearings and lay the crank make sure that we have oil spread all around the bearing well so that there's no dry nothing dry and this back bearing is also the uh, thrust bearing yeah they're a one piece main and thrust bearing whereas some uh, some engines use like a thrust washer that fit in there and you have to kind of hold your mouth right and hold them in place while you're setting the crank in. Uh, really a poor setup as far as I'm concerned, but uh, the international engines, as a general rule, have the thrust bearing built into the main bearing. Okay, so we got the bearings all oiled, so now we'll carefully lay the crank in, lining up our dots. Now something our crank is fresh back from the machine shop. Uh, it's been turned 20 thousandths undersize on the mains and 10 thousandths on the rods, so you have to order bearings accordingly. Okay, so now we'll get this up and in there carefully. You want to set it in carefully so as, oh yeah, right, so as not to damage the journals. Okay, we are two teeth out just at the moment, so let's... There we are. Everything seems to be sitting down right, and you can see dot on a tooth, dot on a valley. In the caps, we check our numbers, start at one at the front to five at the back. And we'll want to put some oil on these as well before we set them in. It's time to tighten our main bearing bolts uh, to torque them down and there's four different possibilities for main cap bolts uh, they have what they call neck down or pitch diameter which means the shaft diameter is the same size as your thread pitch these ones here I would consider pitch diameter and then on the head they say either 10.9 or 12.9 so from the chart there's a very specific torque regimen uh, they say first to bring them all to 30 and then to 59 and then to 107 so we'll start out with our torque wrench and uh, run through them all With that, uh, I think we'll call that the end of part two. Uh, break this up so it's easier for people to find exactly what they're looking for if they're looking for something specific. Uh, 
so in our next part we will start putting pistons back in i uh, hope you've enjoyed the video as always if there's any questions or comments you can leave those in the comments section below uh, please give us a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and as always have a great day